I am on my way to Israel for a week. No children. Kids are really mad at me. <laughs> it's my first time. So we just landed in Israel at Ben Gurion Airport. Oh my god, we got a big welcome here. This is crazy. As a writer, it's particularly meaningful that I come back to a place that I feel very at home and share them with my readers, my community on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and really inform them about what life is like here. Tel Aviv is stunning. How amazing is this view? I'm in Tel Aviv, I can't believe it. Tel Aviv, Israel. So we just went on the most fun graffiti tour. You can scan with your phone and, and get to the artist immediately. It's spirituality, fashion, art, it's all related. And also like beauty is, you know, so within. So, you know, why not enjoy yourself and have fun with it? We are now at um, Alan Bika, which is a fashion designer. Beauty as it relates to Judaism, which I found really interesting. I think that the, that the clothing is really inspired and it's really beautiful and it's very unique. I definitely saw a model of wholeness today with the actor who spoke to us. And I, I feel like it's, it's our job as Jews to define our model of wholeness and to share it with the world. It's kind of beautiful today to come here to the Shuk and to see how everybody together can buy food, share food, and um, eat delicious food. All right, you ready for the crunch? This is the crunch of the century, it better be. I had the idea to start a blog and I thought, why not share the food I grew up with with everyone? Which is what I love, Jewish food, it's constantly evolving. So we're walking through Svat. Tzfat is meaningful because it has been a place of struggle for so long and Tzfat is a place where people have suffered and struggled and stayed and shown real tenacity so that they could show who they are and that, that has kept our people alive. JWRP actually researched along with the team at Yad Vashem the history of my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor. My grandfather died last year, um, the one who was the survivor. We assumed obviously that the whole family died, we didn't know. Um, well, it's, no, it's intense. I think as Jews we all feel very connected to this horrible thing that has happened to us and not that long ago. My stepfather and his sister had no idea whatever happened to their aunt. It was so interesting to just see the paperwork, that what the documentation was, what happened, to be able to see what her path was. This is your mother, Jean, and this is, this is Ella. She stayed behind yeah. to take care of her mother yes. when the rest of the family, of the left, family left because yeah. she couldn't she was too old. She was too old. Visa. That's what my mom. That's yeah. what my mom. She's too old for a visa. I feel fortunate in a way that I that I did embrace the opportunity to go to Yad Vashem because I can be a messenger of that information. They weren't transported yeah. together. No. Oh God, that's gonna break Francis's heart. So 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 <laughs> the takeaway for me is that right now we are all living in a very fragile world. We always have to be vigilant to remind people this can happen. Hatred happens, intolerance happens. The Holocaust was such a tragedy. The only thing that could be worse is to let it happen again. 
We light this candle in memory and in honor of the partisan fighters in all the forests and all those who fought for the sanctity of life. Miriam Perry talked to us about how you can look at your life, you know, as the half glass full or the half is glass empty. She's smiling and she's saying she's finding light. But I feel like, like if she, this woman who has her sons both killed in the wars, the, the courage and the bravery that she showed me, that just opened me up. There are hearts that are made of stone and then there are stones that are made of hearts. And where you're going today is a wall of stones made of hearts. My son has a chronic disease, he has type 1 diabetes, and that's all I can think about. I'm praying that we'll come back in here in two months for his bar mitzvah. And I'm praying it will feel just as wonderful and real and right as it does right now. It feels right to be here. It doesn't feel like I'm on a trip. It feels like I'm home. I really hope that my followers, when they, when they watch my live streams, when they read what I write about Israel, will check all their preconceived notions at the door. Israel is not about one group of people, one religion. There's something here for everyone and there's something accessible. I want them to see that this is a safe place and no matter what you believe, if, if you love people and you love humanity, you're welcome here.